we start. Earnings are about to start up again, and banks are always the first to report. This week is indicative of how earnings could go. Remember, that last set of earnings, even when they were great, had stocks dropped, so be cautious of any bias, both long and short. Additionally, the VIX has dropped to fill the gap to pre-COVID levels. Watch for any spikes in the VIX through the upcoming earnings season and consider using the VIX as a portfolio hedge. A particular tool I like to use as a VIX hedge is UVXY. Okay, guys, so banks are up first as usual and can set the tone for the rest of earnings. Look for good earnings and guidance throughout with a return to stock buybacks and possible increase of dividends. Note, the Fed has said banks have to wait until June 30th to start issuing stock buybacks uh, and issue larger dividends. So any guidance could affect that light. Risks include the recent Archego scandal. However, these banks have already mitigated and minimized that risk. Look for any information drops on guidance towards the scandal for a downside. On a side note, check out what happened to Archegos and see uh, how the risk of over leveraging on your account can destroy you with margin. Even billion dollar funds can get margin called. Now, back to where we were. JP Morgan has stalled out for a bit, hitting resistance at 157 and has been consolidating for the past month near the all time highs. It is also holding its 20 simple moving average. Earnings have been a beat the past three out of four quarters. So look for good guidance with a breakout here. We will evaluate for potential put credit spread, which is a neutral bullish play on our part. Wells Fargo is in a very similar pattern to JP Morgan in the high 30s to 40s, near 52 week high of 41.54, but still $25 away from its all time highs. There is more room for growth here as they get past their recent scandals. At this price, it could be a possible candidate for a set it and forget it type of swing to long term play. Earnings finally came in line with expectations last quarter. Goldman Sachs is in a similar pattern, resistance at 331 after a breakout to 356.85. Good range through the daily with possible option plays for continuation after earnings based on guidance. Second set of banks will be reporting on Thursday morning, Bank of America, Citibank, and USB. Taking a look here at the Bank of America chart, all-time highs was back at 2006 at around $55 per share just before the housing market crash. Riding a nice uptrend with resistance at 40 currently, this is gonna be another good candidate for upside, especially if they announce an increased dividend. Earnings have been above expectations three out of the last four past earnings. Citi is another scandal-plagued bank slowly getting back from the housing market crisis. 52-week high at 76.13 on March 18th, consolidated around $70 since. Another good breakout candidate of the bunch with recent all-time highs. And we're going to take a look at one last sector. <clears throat> Delete that part. USB actually has the most bullish pattern of the bunch with recent all-time highs. Another couple of banks reporting Friday morning will be Morgan Stanley. Again, similar pattern to Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan. Uh, with Morgan Stanley's current price at $80 with all-time highs at 86.64. With COVID restrictions beginning to ease up and folks looking to travel during the summer months, a nice preview of the airline and travel industries can come in through Delta Airlines, ticker symbol DAL. Trading to the upper end of an uptrend channel, possibility for a nice swing long-term play in this travel industry. Look for ear opening guidance and lower cash burn from COVID travel restrictions. Currently about 14 points from all time highs pre-COVID. <clears throat> AA is an aluminum supply company looking for information on aluminum supply versus demand to determine production and aviation and other companies using aluminum. So again, AA can be a good barometer for us to determine the demand uh, for supply chains and making these aviation uh, travel commodities. So again, AA is a good barometer for determining the demand in travel and hotel industries right now at this point in time. PEP or Pepsi Cola, a nice potential long-term play, trading an uptrend on the 10-year monthly chart with resistance at 145. However, at the upper end of a neutral channel at this one-year daily chart, look for guidance to indicate a continuing purchase of snacks and beverages in addition to contracts with restaurants looking to become more profitable as reopenings continue. So again, folks, most of the plays that we discussed today are going to be on the reopening side with regards to travel, supply chain, airlines, and even restaurants. So we have a variety of plays to make as COVID restrictions begin to ease down and the economy begins to open up. Let's see how these plays unfold and we'll get back to you guys next week. Don't forget to subscribe not only to our YouTube channel, but as well as our Discord. See you folks on here next week.